Hello. So, I decided to go to the moon and back. Ooh, that's buggy. I decided to go to the moon and back in career mode. Um, normally in career mode, I sacrifice an awful lot of astronauts. Um, because you can get so much science um, by just leaving them on the moon. And bringing people back from the moon, I tend to use, uh, you know, large engines. And in this case, uh, there are none. I haven't gotten that far yet. The largest engines I have are currently equipped. Uh, I don't even have any 2.5 meters. It's all, all tiny stuff. Um, but we're going to give it a shot. And I'm pretty confident that I've got enough fuel. And this is going to be unedited, so if you're not in the mood to sit through what's probably going to be half an hour of just me moving through Kerbal space. Um, you can skip this one, it's not terribly important. But, as you can see, I've got some, uh, like they, they call it asparagus routing rather than onion routing because it goes uh, around and rather, rather than straight up and down. This is an unusual kind of asparagus routing because I'm using these uh, triple systems rather than the normal way of doing it. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, simply because when you don't have a 2.5 meter stack, it's actually really difficult to get the level of um, uh, each each layer of the of the uh, asparagus is is much less useful. So you have to put in more layers, and that means that you have to pack in more structurally, uh, and those are an efficient way to pack in. 1.5 meter stacks. Now this is really much wobblier than I thought it would be. Um, it's probably just just something that's going to vanish in a moment here. I'll just put up with it for a little bit here. Alright, there we are. And now we should have no problems. And obviously I don't use any kind of um, Jeb mech or or mech jib, rather, or anything like that. I'm just eyeballing it and doing as I please. Um, but it should work out fine. What we're going to do is we're going to land at a cusp, that is to say at the edge of a crater, and that'll give us the ability to get several biomes with just our feet. Uh, we don't need to have a rover. Um, although I have built a rover that actually works okay, uh, I prefer to wait until I've got the best wheels and... Uh, that, that means not what I have right now. I don't have the best wheels. I've barely just got the worst wheels. <laughs> uh, we're also a little bit... Um, our timing is a little bit late for this launch, so we're not going to come into the moon quite as efficiently as normal, but I happen to think that we're going to have plenty of fuel. Uh, I overpacked our fuel because of those that massive cluster of 12 long boosters at the very beginning. Um, that really, really uh, put us over the top uh, for the fuel. I think we're not going to have any problems on that front. All right, so let's go ahead and shoot. -doop. Oh, that was too far! Damn it! That sucks. Now I have to waste some fuel turning around and accelerating in the opposite direction. So. so we're officially out of our main booster stages, but we've got plenty of fuel left in our lander, uh, which is built uh, as an onion routing lander in itself, so um, that should be fine. We just need to get close enough to the moon to land on it, I think that'll do just, just fine. So let's go ahead and accelerate. I'm not going to bother taking any science before I reach the moon, because I've already taken all of the science in space and uh, in, in close... Uh, proximity to the moon, but I haven't actually landed on the moon. This is the first time in this save. Uh, so if you've played uh, career mode before, you might want to go ahead and give it a shot with um, uh, with mods. Some of the mods that have come out of uh, change career mode drastically. Some of them are pretty cheaty. I'm not a big fan of uh, the main rocket pack. Um, uh, I forget what it is. The one that includes all of Slug's parts. Uh, 
that one really breaks career mode. It includes way too many really powerful engines really and, and, uh, and fuel canisters really, really early. So I don't recommend that one. But Fire Spitter is cool, and, uh, and so is the LLL um, uh, Labs pack. Um, there's a whole bunch of mods that are cool and aren't terribly unbalanced. And obviously there are plenty of mods that are terribly unbalanced. Uh, you know, that's how it happens, I guess. with mods. It's going to take a long time before people figure out what the pacing is supposed to be for these kinds of uh, uh, career mode stuff. Right now the pacing is bad. Um, in the early game it's okay, but as you reach about the level I'm at now, maybe one or two more leafs, you start to gather so much science with each expedition that there's not really any point. Uh, it, it, you just unlock like three or four tiers in every trip. Um, and I think you can unlock every single piece of science without ever leaving uh, uh, Kerbal space. I think you can actually do it without ever entering solar orbit. Um, but I know you can do it with just visits to these uh, these three bodies and uh, and Duna, and uh, and most of that is like you go to Duna and suddenly you've got more than eight thousand uh, science, and you can just unlock everything. Uh, that pacing is really bad. So that's something that's going to have to be fixed. So what I'm what I'm saying is that the mod pacing is bad, but the core pacing hasn't been figured out yet. So you can't really blame the modders for not being perfect on that front. So what we're going to do is we're going to land mm, there. I think we're going to have to turn a little bit north to do that. So maybe here. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Anywhere at the cusp of that great crater is fine. Um, but not here, because that would be a long walk. Uh, well, I guess it wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> Without a rover, it's difficult to get around. All right, so you can see that we still have plenty of fuel, because what I've got set up here is a four ring, four rings of fuel plus two central fuel tanks. I am using LLL fuel tanks, but they're not significantly better. The only reason I'm using them is because their profile's a little bit nicer. Um, they're... Uh, uh, they're not any more effective or weight efficient or anything. Uh, in fact, in terms of space taken up, they're less efficient. Um, they're they're actually taller than the equivalent uh, standard tank. That's actually one of the reasons I'm using them. I can stack some solar panels on them. I haven't gotten far enough in this particular save to even get extendable solar panels. So all I have is surface mount solar. I guess we'll land here-ish. Uh, how about right there? Yeah, that's probably a better option. Just got to uh, bring it in a little bit. There we go. So you notice I don't use anything like MechJeb, even if it was available. I think it probably is by now, but even if it was available, I don't use it. Um, I really like doing this stuff manually. I think it's really fun. Uh, and you can see I also don't use anything like uh, um, those points you can put on and, and uh, on your orbit to calculate things out. I've pretty much just got it all memorized um, in terms of how things, uh, how orbits transfer and stuff like that. And it's a lot of fun that way. Uh, if you've never tried to just freehand everything, I really recommend it. I'm sure it's less efficient. I mean, I'm literally sure it's less efficient. I know for a fact that it's less efficient. But uh, it's just so much more fun. So. Alright, I guess we should start breaking now. And I'm coming in. I'm not breaking straight on because I don't want us to actually lose much... Uh, lose much of our, our motion. I want us to land pretty close to where we're supposed to land, so I'm, I'm going a little bit high with our braking so that our so we don't drift. I guess I braked a little bit early. I didn't realize how light this this vehicle was. It looks a lot heavier than it is because the uh, the LLL tanks are a little bit longer than they should be. They're not any lighter or anything, they're just longer. Well, I guess I probably didn't. I probably would have been cutting it a little bit close to wait any longer than that. Alright, now I can break straight on. 
because I want to land on the near side of that crater. I want to land right there. Now, if we were going to do this real, uh, real well, we might land somewhere else and have a little bit of a walk. Um, I've actually gathered uh, using just just a guy with no vehicle or anything. I've actually gathered from four different um, uh, biomes here on the moon, and that's fine. Uh, but I didn't really want you guys to have to sit through that kind of behavior, so I figured I'd just grab it from two. And you can see that I've already already grabbed everything from above the moon, so now it's just a matter of properly landing and we are directly where we should be so I'm gonna bring it up there we go and then we want to break uh, and obviously if you've played around much with um, uh, how you're supposed to land things nobody would ever recommend that you're moving that you move at 200 meters per second at 10,000 feet when you know that you're gonna impact the ground somewhere between 6,000 and 4,000 uh, it just it's just playing it a little bit risky but I'm pretty familiar with the ship characteristics by now and I'm also pretty familiar with landing on the moon so uh, I'm not not too worried about it I'm pretty sure that we will break in time because we should be landing at about 3500 feet and we're already well below 100 meters per second so I'm not uh, not fussed oh and I'm playing uh, a special uh, self-restriction mode of this game where uh, Jebediah has to go on every mission and uh, um, and you always has it in sense that's true you always have to bring him home which is why I'm coming back after I finish landing uh, you can't you can't leave him on the moon or anything like that uh, and you can't launch anything that's automated because Jebediah has to go on every mission uh, I could play it Iron Man style and have no uh, no take backs, you know, no reversions allowed, but I'm not quite that Iron Man about it. I'm I'm uh, I'm okay with uh where's my shadow, goddammit. Oh there it is. I'm okay with letting um uh, with reverting if I screw up. But I don't think I will. I think that it's I think it's all gonna go quite swimmingly from here. I just have to land without crashing and it should be ref should be fine. As you might be able to tell, I use the shadow to actually gauge my uh, landing distance. I do use lighting as well, but I'm, in this case I haven't equipped this ship with any lights, so that wouldn't work. The new landing legs are really uber powerful. I could hit the ground going 5 meters per second and they would work fine. Uh, so that gentle landing was entirely unnecessary. I could have really, I could have really hauled ass into the pavement and it would have been fine. So we're just going to go ahead and start to do some science here. Um, I landed facing the wrong direction. That's okay. Whee! Ah, crunch. Ah. Keep. Keep. No, don't. Uh, that was almost bad. The landing legs have uh, have really been improved too much. Um, but one of the things they do now is if there's any debris that rolls under the ship, the landing legs will attempt to climb over it, which usually ends up upriding, you know, uh, screwing up your ship. And, and oh, I need to get. Uh, and you don't want it. It's it's one of the things that the landing legs do that I don't like, even though now they're so much better than they used to be. Eve's surface still vibrates. I don't know what's up with that. I guess it. I guess people must. I guess they must want it to. Um, because I can't imagine them going through a major update like this and not fixing something that obvious. Uh, but the vibration appears to just be visual, since the landing legs don't don't push through the excuse me don't push through the surface at all. Uh, I used to have problems landing on Eve, where my ship would just fall through the surface if I uh, walked away and then came back. So I'm just oop shit. Time to go home. <laughs> We're only going to gather from one gathering point um, because, unfortunately, uh, I screwed that up and I accidentally disengaged everything. Um, 
and I can't really rely on the ship surviving, so... Alright, so we need to go west. Oh, east. Yeah, there we are. I can't really rely on the, uh, on the ship surviving with no landing legs, so I have to launch. Oh well, I'll come back for the crater some other day. I'm actually not... not entirely confident. Oh, we should have plenty of fuel. I was going to launch with some fuel still on the... Uh, still attached. Uh, and then drop them off onions, onion, onion stage style, but I guess that's not not what I'm going to do this time. Um, I guess I I really just want to go straight away from the surface, even though that's not the most efficient thing. I really don't care to try and fuss with it. I've gotten enough fuel to just power my way through it, so that's what I'll do. And you can see that I'm really eyeballing it. Um, and I don't have a perfect angle of exit here. Uh, it's not not perfect, but it'll do. All I have to do is bring it down to, you know, maybe 60,000 or something like that. There we go. Oh, a little bit less than that. There we go. And that'll let me land. And you can see that we're going to land on the sun side. So that'll be fun. Um, there we go. Why did it pop up to 74,000? Bastards. There we go. Yeah. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Uh, I don't think we're going to need any more engine, so goodbye engine. Oh, I have to bring it down to one times, obviously. And then we'll just um, let our re-entry take us here. Boom, shoomp. And again, I've gathered all the science that's available here, so I hate when the camera does that. Come on, you asshole. Great, it's tilted. Fucking stupid. Well, whatever. Alright, so now we're low enough to the ground that our parachute will catch, so we'll go ahead and deploy it now. Oh, jeez, we're still moving much too fast to do something like that. There we go. Um, and I really wish that this camera... This camera is... There we are. I don't know what the hell was up with that section where it was just malfunctioning. So we're waiting for our... Did we go back up? Oh, you got to be kidding me. Somehow we didn't... We didn't get close enough? Come on, pop. Pop, damn you. I think we're still okay, though. Yeah, yeah, we didn't... We didn't reach escape velocity again. We just kind of skipped a little bit. I guess that's fine. There we are. That's better. I think that this terrain is at 700, thereabouts, so when we get down to around 2,000, I'll decelerate to one time speed so I don't rip myself in half. Oh, it looks a little bit closer than I thought. No, I'm just on a big hill. <laughs> That's fine. Alright, you can uh, pop open any time you'd like. Although if I was right, it'll pop open at 1,200. Oh. Okay, so it was 500. That's fine. and recover the vessel. Alright, and, uh, and you can see that the vessel alone was worth 30 science. So I was at 1 science when I launched, so even that 
abortive, crappy little launch where I didn't do any science along the route netted me 363 science. So, I guess that's just an example of how you might be able to do this sort of thing, and I hope you enjoyed watching it.